The integumentary system includes the skin and its different layers, as well as the derivatives. In this section of the tutorial, we'll discuss the derivatives or special structures of the integument, including hair follicles, sebaceous glands, sweat glands, and nails. The formation of skin derivatives. The skin has a number of derivatives or accessory structures. Shown here in the image is a cross section of the skin and accessory structures such as the hair, apricot sweat glands, erector pili muscle, and sebaceous glands. These derivatives develop from infoldings of the epidermis during embryological development. The development of hair follicles can take up to 100 days or more during embryogenesis. The first derivative or accessory structure we'll discuss is the hair. The hair is made up of a hair follicle, a hair papilla at the base, and a hair shaft. The human body is covered with hair, from the hair on the scalp to the upper and lower limbs. Hair is a non-living structure made up of keratin produced from a hair follicle. The functions of hair include protecting the scalp from the sun, insulating the body, filtering the air entering the nasal cavities, and sensing foreign particles or insects on the surface of the skin. As you can see on the image on the right side of the screen, the erector pili muscle is directly attached to the hair. This leads to movement or standing up of hair on our body. The sebaceous gland and apricot sweat gland have ducts that communicate and deliver their products through the hair shaft up to the surface of the skin. There are three main categories of hair, and the majority of the hair on the human body is not on the scalp. The three categories of hair are, number one, vetus hair. This is fine hair found over the entire body, also called peach fuzz. Number two is intermediate hair. This is typically found on the limbs. And number three is terminal hair. This is thick, deeply pigmented hair, such as the hair on the scalp and eyebrows. Hair is produced through a special keratinization process from the hair bulb. Basal cells in the hair matrix, deep in the dermis, divide and are pushed towards the surface. The edge of the developing hair contains soft keratin. In the cortex of the hair, it contains hard keratin. The hair cuticle is made up of a layer of dead keratinized cells that coats the exterior portion of the hair shaft. Hair color is produced by melanocytes and these are located in the papilla of the hair in the dermis. Hair color is determined genetically, but the condition of your hair can be influenced by hormones and the environment. The amount of melanin in the cortex of the hair determines whether the hair is brown or black. For red hair, there's a distinct form of melanin that produces the red color. As we age, the hair color lightens towards gray. The next derivative of the integument we'll discuss are sebaceous glands. The skin contains sebaceous oil glands, and they produce a lipid secretion called sebum. The gland produces sebum and delivers it into the duct that's connected to the hair follicle. As the erector pili muscle contracts, this elevates or raises the hair and squeezes the gland, forcing the sebum up onto the skin. Sebaceous glands produce sebum. Sebum is made up of lipids, wax, and components of dead, fat-producing cells. The release of sebum is known as holocrine secretions because sebum is released in conjunction with the remnants of dead fat cells. Sebum functions by lubricating and protecting the hair shaft, lubricating the skin, and limiting the growth of bacteria on the skin surface. The following is a clinical note on acne vulgaris, or acne. This is characterized by areas of the skin that contain a number of non-inflammatory follicular papules, or, in more severe forms of acne, inflammatory pustules or nodules. Acne typically occurs in the teenage years, affecting more than 90% of all teenagers. 
usually a blockage in the follicles along with the formation of a keratin and sebum plug occurs in the development of acne. There are different causes of acne, including pubertal hormone changes, hyperactive sebaceous glands, bacteria in the pores of the skin, and in some cases the use of anabolic steroids. The treatments for acne include a change in hygiene practices, the use of topical bactericidals, topical antibiotics, oral antibiotics, oral retinoids such as a drug called Accutane, and in some cases dermabrasion and blue light phototherapy. The third derivative of the integument we'll discuss are sweat glands. Sweat glands can be divided into two categories, apocrine and merocrine. Sweat glands function by cooling the surface of the skin to contribute to lowering body temperature. They also excrete water and limit the growth of bacteria on the surface of the skin. Apocrine sweat glands are located in the axilla and the groin area. They produce a viscous, cloudy, and sometimes odorous secretion. These coiled tubular glands are less numerous than Merican sweat glands. Pheromones can be released in the secretions from these glands. The other type of sweat glands are Merican sweat glands. These are more numerous than Aprican sweat glands. They are not as deep in the dermis as compared to Aprican sweat glands, and they have a different type of secretion. These glands secrete sweat. This is made up of water, metabolites, electrolytes, and waste products. They secrete their secretions directly onto the surface of the skin. There are other types of glands in the skin, including mammary glands in breast tissue and ceruminous glands. The mammary gland of the breast contains cuboidal milk secreting cells. And in each breast, there can be one or more complex mammary glands and 10 to 20 simple glands. The development of mammary glands takes place in response to ovarian hormones. Ceruminous glands are located in the external auditory canal and they secrete cerumen. Cerumen combines with the secretions of sebaceous glands to produce earwax. The fourth type of integumentary derivative are the nails. Shown here in the image is a fingernail. The growth of the nail is towards the nail free edge. The white half moon shape seen under the nail is the lunula. And at the point where the nail meets the skin, it's known as the eponychium. Adjacent to the eponychium is the proximal nail fold. Nails are tightly packed, hard, keratinized epidermal cells. They offer protection to the fingers and toes, they enhance the grip and the handling of small objects, and the average growth rate of a nail is one millimeter per week. The anatomy of the nail. The nail consists of the following. A nail root, which is a portion of the nail under the skin. The nail body, which is a visible pink portion of the nail. The lunula, which is the white crescent at the base of the nail, which is made up of nail matrix and appears white because of the obscured blood vessels. The hyponychium, which secures a nail to the finger itself, and the eponychium, which is a cuticle. This is a narrow band around the proximal edge of the nail. The nail free edge. This is the white end that may extend beyond the finger. In general, changes in nail shape or structure can indicate illness.